Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video. Hey, look, man, you like the content of this video, go hit that like button, like the content of this channel, go hit subscribe. Hey, we was in that dog days of like that six and a half weeks when nothing was really happening, but training camp is around the corner. Uh, I think we're about like 10 days out from the whole team reporting, a couple of days out from the rookies, and I believe the quarterbacks reporting. So, we about to crank back up. Videos gonna start coming more often. It's, it's really football season, if you ask me, right? Is, is, is really here now um the ravens training camp you know they had the training camp passes and those things is out so that means you know like i said the football is coming so what i want to do is i want to talk about training camp what do what do fans want to see right kind of like what i did for the otas so this one is going to be about overall what do i want to see throughout the course of the entire training camp all right uh not just week one i might do a week one video after you know uh right, right before week one of the training camp happens but for the entirety of training camp, um, we're gonna go position by position, all right? So with quarterback, I think that it'd be great news if if Lamar Jackson's contract is completed um, during this training camp. Now, where is that coming from? It's more about the fact that, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson gave that interview, not interview, I'm sorry, the press conference before he left off, you know, with mandatory OTAs and everything like that. And he was saying that the notion that he was waiting until the off season or waiting to try to win a Super Bowl to get a contract was not completely accurate. That he deserves to be paid now and he wants to be paid now. So with with that thought in mind, what better time to do it than, than in training camp? All right. Him and the Ravens are going to be seeing each other a whole bunch. They're going to be around. He's going to be in Baltimore. Ravens, Ravens are here, obviously. They're going to be in the castle on Owens Mills with plenty of time to sit down and negotiate that contract. So that's a hope. If it doesn't happen, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to hit the panic button, but that is a hope. That is something I would like to see is that contract get done. Okay. Um, as far as the running back room, running back room, we got to start with the injuries. Okay. Um, I want to see at some point during training camp that JK and Gus are back. Now, it doesn't mean that I expect them to be out there week one. I don't really care about that. I want to see that they're ramping up to play right now. Um, that could just be, you know, some on-field drills, some things like that. I don't think they should be in any contact right away. Uh, but, you know, I want to see that they're in preparations to to, to get going. Because, you know, we're going to need both of those guys this year. Um, staying with the running backs, Tyler Beatty, Mike Davis. I want to hear that they have a good training camps. More Tyler Beatty just because he has a more diverse skill set as a pass catcher and he can run the ball. So if he's having a good training camp, that means that I know that the position can be held down for the first couple weeks of the season, giving J.K. and Gus more time if they need it, okay? Um, so wide receivers. Wide receivers is the big, big contention point on this team, right? Now, throughout the course of training camp, um, I think the Ravens need to add a wide receiver, a veteran that's not going to take away too many snaps. The guy that I like is a guy like Will Fuller. Um, I know his injury history. I know all of that. But... He won't have to play a ton of uh, snaps. He won't take away from other guys who want to get snaps. And um, hopefully with the reduced role, you know, um, he won't get hurt. But as far as the guys that are here, um, I want to hear that they're making plays in training camp. That's, that's, that's all it comes down to because they're going against probably what's going to end up being a top, a top 10 conservatively. But if I want to get real aggressive with the top three to five defense in the NFL. So they're going against a good defense every day, all right? Now, I want to hear that they're making plays on this good defense because if they can make plays in practice versus this defense, when it comes to games on a regular season, they need, they, they'll they be able to show up. Um, I did a video on Tyler Wallace. I think Tyler Wallace is a guy that's being, I don't want to say forgotten, but I think he is an underrated part of the receiving core because we hear about Bateman, who we all expect to have a great year. We hear about Proche, who's been kind of, pushed into number two role and then we hear about Duvernay who's been pushed into the slot role but like where does that leave Tyler Wallace now um I believe the Ravens would heavily rotate that receiver so just because maybe you know those guys start you know doesn't mean Tyler Wallace won't get play but I think Tyler Wallace has an opportunity um to really close the gap because the gap can't be that huge between Proche and Wallace and Duvernay honestly so he has an opportunity during camp to make enough plays to show that hey look I need to be getting significant snaps on this team. And I have no dog in the race, honestly. I just need one of those guys to step up. I don't care who it is. One of them needs to step up, 
All right. And with that, and, that, and that's that. Um, as far as the undrafted guys, I don't know if the Ravens will go into their season with a fifth or sixth receiver being an undrafted guy. They might be a practice squad guy, but somebody like uh, Shamar Bridges, you know, 6'4", 6'5", 200 pounds, fluid mover, good route runner, good hands. Um, I would love to see if he can make the team. Somebody like Devin Williams, big body guy like that too. So we'll see what those guys can do, see if they can make plays during this uh, training camp period. Uh, tight end, uh, really, uh, Mark Andrews is going to do his thing, so I'm not too worried about that. I want to keep hearing about Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely has a chance to be a massive X factor on this team. Now, the Ravens generally, they slow play rookies sometimes and don't bring him on the field enough and things like that just to try to get him adjusted to the NFL. I think that, especially with our receiver core not being 100%, um, it's not the most dynamic receiver core. We got to be honest. They have a chance to be. They got to put it on the field and prove it. But as of right now, they're, they're not that. So a guy like Isaiah Likely, can, he can add to the room, even though he's a tight end, but he can add to the the receiving position to give him Lamar Jackson another weapon to throw the ball to. That's what I'm really looking for is to hear Isaiah Likely's name popping up. And even Charlie Kohler, because we hear so much about Likely that Kohler just shouldn't be forgotten either. This guy is not a blocking tight end. He's a, you know, um, kind of like Mark Andrews was at Oklahoma, line him up in the slot, uh, do everything kind of tight end. So I want to hear that he's playing well. Nick Boyle, um, if he's on the field, that's fine. I know he's getting back to health. You know, the whole best shape of my life kind of thing. So we'll see that if Nick Ball continues to progress, then that's good. No problem with it, okay? Um, offensive line, right? Now, offensive line, the big name is Ronnie Stanley. Now, Ronnie Stanley is a guy that I would actually like to see out there week one when it comes to playing the Jets in the regular season, okay? So what does that mean for training camp? Harbaugh has already said Stanley is a past the point of rehabbing an injury. Now we're talking about getting in football shape, football fitness, now, there's been videos of Ronnie Stanley uh, running in the sand. Um, well, I don't know if it's videos. more like a picture. I don't think it's been videos. I don't know. Somebody can correct me on that. But point being, he's working past that 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 phase of rehab. Now it was about putting the work in to get back on the field. And that's what I want to see from Ronnie Stanley is put that work in to get back on the field. That's what's important. Um, as the offensive line as a whole, um, the left guard spot is – the biggest spot on the team. I think everything else is kind of set in stone. Stanley at left, Linderbaum at center, Seitler at right guard, Morgan Moses at right tackle. The only question is who's going to be the starting left guard. Now, my vote right now is for Tyree Phillips, but obviously Ben Cleveland's in the mix, Ben Powers is in the mix, Ben Powers can end up being cut, traded, who knows, kind of how they did Ben Bredesen. But um, that's the spot where one of those guys needs to separate themselves and... And, and win the job. It shouldn't be, the you know, Ravens will probably rotate some offensive linemen in and out too, but I would like them to have a solid guy there starting, okay? Um, so my, like I said, my boy right now for Tyree Phillips, but if Ben Cleveland plays better and wins the job, hey, no problem with me. You want the best guy out there. Defense, so let's, start, let's flip on the other side of the trenches. Defensive line, um, interior pass rush. Um, Matabike needs to continue to be a force, okay? Um, Calais Campbell plays a lot of snaps, uh, or at least he has in the past. If he can cut down on his snaps, and maybe he'll become a more effective pass rusher. I know Calais Campbell wants to get to a uh, he wants to get to 100 sacks. I think he's about seven and a half or eight sacks away. Um, I'll, I'll look it up, but I know that's important to him. Now I think he's playing a lot of snaps, and that can take and that can drain his energy. But if you got a guy like Matabike in there making plays, maybe that can relieve some pressure off Calais Campbell to have to play as much. Um, but the interior offensive line, I'm sorry, interior defensive line group, I think the Raiders have a solid group and they have a really good group in there. A lot of guys that can um, play the run and rush the pass to Travis Jones, things like that. So I want to hear that that group is playing well. Travis Jones is a guy that he started off really hot. I think he stayed that way pretty much throughout the whole um, rookie mini camp, training camp phase, or sorry, uh, OTA phase, excuse me. So I want to continue to hear that about that during the OTAs. Um, rookie defensive linemen can, can tend to struggle sometimes, uh, especially for the Ravens. So I want to hear that he's breaking through that because I think we're going to need Travis Jones' pass rush ability on this team, okay? Now, outside linebackers. Um... The Ravens signed Justin Houston, but unfortunately, obviously, they lost, you know, Jalen Ferguson. So the so the outside linebacker room to me could still use another guy. 
Now, Adafi always a guy that we know is going to be solid. Um, well, more than solid, I want him to see, break out and be a star this year. You know, there was a list out there saying that uh, they had to pick a breakout star for the Ravens who could be a pro bowler. Adafi always made the list. I think it might have been a Bleacher Report article. So, that's what I want to see from Adafi Owe. Break out this year. All right. Uh, Dalen Hayes star the offseason so far. Continue to be that star in the offseason, but then also transfer that to the regular season. But we're just going to focus on training camp right now. Continue to make plays in training camp and continue to make plays in the preseason. Because he's probably going to play in that. Um, Justin Houston, he won't play in preseason. You know, just stay healthy throughout training camp. That's the big thing with Justin Houston. Stay in shape, stay healthy, get to the regular season. Um, obviously, Ojabo, uh, Tyus Bowser. What's their updates? What are their situations? Um, when does it look like they're going to play? But as far as just training camp goes, let's just hear that they're making progress, getting closer and closer each day. That's going to be the biggest thing. I don't think too much is going to change in their status between now and the first game of the season. Uh, but you want to hear that they're making progress so that they can come back, you know, in the first half of the season at some point, both guys. All right. Now, who else is going to step up? You know, there's um, Jeremiah Moon, there's Stephen Means, there's Patrick's opportunity of Vince Beagle. There's opportunity at this old outside linebacker group. Who's going to take that chance? Who's going to step up? Somebody needs to snatch the opportunity because unless the Ravens sign another guy, to me, they're still short on players, especially to start the season with Ojabo and Bowser injured. They're still short people that they need. All right. Uh, linebackers. Now, middle linebackers, inside linebackers. Okay. Um, Patrick Queen. I think the biggest thing for Patrick Queen is if he can learn to take on more responsibility. Last year, he started off slow, looked like everything was moving too fast for him. Then when they took responsibility away from him, brought Josh, brought, uh, Josh Bynes to put him next to him, it freed up Patrick Queen to do more. He was more effective. He was more comfortable. That's fine. I'm great. I'm glad to hear that. But you were drafted to be the, the, the Ravens middle linebacker. That, that comes with a lot of pressure. I get that. But uh, you were drafted to be that next guy. So, with that being said, there needs to be a green dot where, okay, somebody who calls out the defense, gets the guys in line, and then makes a play as well. Patrick Queen, if he could be that guy, that'd be great. Now, why Patrick Queen? Okay, one, he is the linebacker; he's in the middle of the defense. He sees it every. He, sees, he should see it all. Two, Chuck Clark's future, while I think he will be on the Ravens this entire season, it's still a little murky right now. We don't know. Okay, he could be traded. He could not be. I'm going to go for that. He's not going to be traded, but you don't know. So. That leaves either Kyle Hamilton, who's a rookie, and I don't want to give a rookie the green dot, and um, Marcus Williams, who's a free safety. But to me, free safety is always in the back end, calling out the defense to everybody else up front. Um, I'm just, I, I never really liked that idea. So that, to me, that leaves Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen needs to take a jump this year, needs to become a better player. Um, that play he did was, at the, like, I would say the second half of the season last year. He needs to be that guy, plus better because he needs to be able to take on responsibility, all right? Um, so that's what I'm seeing with Patrick Quinn. Malik Harrison, I want to see him go on the field. I think he's a talented player, especially as especially as a run defender. Um, if he gets any better in pass coverage, he could take away some stats to Josh Bynes. But Josh Bynes is solid, so, you know, it is what it is at that point. Okay, cornerbacks. Cornerbacks, um, Marcus Williams. No, I'm sorry, not Marcus, sorry. Marcus Peters, my, my apologies. Marcus Peters, he seems to be on track for his... Um, you know, doing his recovery. He expects to be back, you know, playing in training camp at some point. So that's what I want to see. Marcus Peters is back on the opposite side of Marlon uh, Humphrey. Um, you know, getting ready to get, get ready, get wrapped up for the regular season, playing, being effective, things like that. Okay. Um, the rookies, the young guys, um, Pepe, uh, Jalen Armour Davis. And so, like I said, young guys, not just rookies, second year guys, Brandon Stevens in that mix. Those guys need to have a good training camp because they're going to play. All right. The Ravens, like I said, they're going to rotate. They rotate at every position. All right. Essentially. So when, you know, Kyle Foyle comes out, um, who's going to come in? All right. Is it going to be Armour Davis? Is it going to be Pepe Williams? Is it going to be Brandon Stevens? Somebody needs to assert themselves as a guy that can be trusted in coverage, trusted in, in run fits, and continue to make plays. All right. So this is a big training camp for those guys. I think they will all play. Um, the Ravens have so many corners. I mean, they even got a guy like Emar Marshall who hasn't played a snap 
you know, it seems like in a couple years, I think he's maybe only played one or two games officially for the Ravens. So they got a lot of guys on his roster at cornerback. Who's going to assert themselves behind our top three guys? Who's going to be that next guy in line? Who's going to assert themselves? Uh, Pepe Williams had a really, really good um, rookie mini camp, OTAs. His name kept getting mentioned. Dale Armadale is a solid in coverage as well. Um, so those guys, just keep escalating your game, elevating your game, and keep going up and up and up. That would be great. Brandon Stevens, same thing. All right. Safety room. Now, the safety room to me is about two things, okay? How well is Marcus Williams picking up the defense? He's a smart player, intelligent player. But still, it's a new defense. He has to learn a new system. You know, it, it could take time. How well is he picking that up? And if he is picking it up well, can he put it into action and be that middle field safety that the Ravens have really needed since Earl Thomas has left? Okay. Um, the Ravens last year played with two strong safeties, as we know. Deshaun Elliott, now in Detroit, and Chuck Clark was still on this team. And it just didn't work in pass coverage. Because... Playing with two strong safeties is just not intended to work that way. It, it, it usually doesn't work out, okay? Playing with two free safeties, now that could give you some more flexibility. But usually two strong safeties, two guys who belong in the box, now you're selling one and they got to play deep. doesn't work out. The Ravens realized that, signed Marcus Williams to a very expensive contract. So how quick is he picking the defense, and how quickly can he uh, turn what he's learned about defense into plays on the field, all right? Um, and then can't forget about the rookie. All right. Kyle Hamilton, first round pick, number 14 overall. How is he going to be used? That's what I'm interested in hearing from reporters. Where is he lining up at? Is it some linebacker? Is it some slot? Is it some, you know, deep field safety? That's what's interesting about Kyle Hamilton. He gives the Ravens so much uh, versatility, so many options that um, I want to see how McDonald is using him so far in the um, rookie mini camp. I don't really care too much if he plays in preseason, um, but at training camp, I want to hear about how he's being used in every day like that. So um, that's my, what do I want to see as far as what's going on in the training camp as a whole. Uh, the Ravens are in line for a good season. So uh, I'm excited for them. Um, going to the, the stadium practice on July 30th. Unfortunately, I couldn't really get any training camp passes. They sold out like that. Usually I'm able to grab a couple. This year, I wasn't so lucky, but I will be at the like I said, I will be at the stadium. I will be at the uh, stadium practice. I believe it's July 30th. So to see the guys in person, man, and I'm excited for it. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.